Squid, I say, in Zimbabwe, welcome to our channel, Zing Confessions and Deep Secrets. Can I carry on the channel? Please don't forget to subscribe. Can I watch what I'm subscribe? But don't forget to comment and share this video. Nas Mare Zimbabwe, it's a figure in a Buddhist squad. Na ex uh, military intelligence officer, whenever my squid, I say, our Buddha, I tell you, I cheat. No, I'm not sure. Between Vice President Constantino Chiwenga, the President Emerson Munangagwa, and the Musuno, the one on one meeting, Musuwe Mande, and the VP Constantino Chiwenga, Vakaudza, Emerson Munangagwa, Kuti, Nyayao, Ye, the term high school, Budirira, and the Alopera Mushi, Mure Zimbabwe, he, Zuwanzi, President Emerson Munangagwa, he, Vakaudza, Kola, for a vacation, we got a date. My ministers pick a farm. Ogo, we got a yenda. My ministers, we just talk farm rabo. We got Buddha on his ex and we got the Masuera say. We just talk about it. We just talk about it. During their one-on-one meeting on Monday, VP Constantino Chwenga told the Masuera Munangagwa in no uncertain terms that his 2030 ambition would remain a chimera. The more Munangagwa tried to be frenetic, the more he was told he was nothing but a lot of cold swallow. Uh, after Chwenga's exotic candid talk, the meeting wrapped up in an unusual fashion as the VP seeming addict had struck, struck the room like a tasty fireball from a crushed petrol tanker that was still consuming Emerson's scalp. Quite bemused, he suffered a momentous migraine afterwards. To recover from the abrasion, Mnangagwa came up with a vacation plan and invited ministers to his farm whose activities are state funded. The disinterested VP the disinterested VP was possibly now preoccupied with his Regeriva Komana current chaos cold and busy. Cold in busy and no show at Precav. Zimbabwe. <laughs> He is being begged by the military to own it, but he it a take over from Vamunangagwa. As no matter much, and from that I go on our Zakari, Vachuenga, but he boycott the function. Iyo, yaka attend one of my cabinet ministers who praise our president. He must own Munangagwa. So I couldn't resort one. But our Iyo, but he the president was Munangagwa. The vice president Constantino Chuenga have us go on and face to face with Zimbabwe. Uh, the news works for Kabuda, Stora Ivo, Vachiti. The army, Yaka, is a roadblock to Mnangagwa's steady term. It's the armor sources are within the army. Kabuda, Stora Ivo, Vachiti, they are not going to late a uh, President Emerson Mnangagwa. They are beyond 2030 since they are vying for Vice President Constantino to win out on Vachitonga. Uh, the news works for Kabuda on the official ex endo Stora Vachiti. Roadblock for Munangago. And his president, Emerson Munangago, battles to extend his term of office beyond his 2028 second term constitutional limit, despite his feeble and ironic public denials claiming to be a constitutionalist. The stumbling block is the military, the traditional political power broker in Zimbabwean politics. Military sources tell the news works Munangago will be blocked from any constitutional changes to extend his stay in office, which is which his party's NPF is demanding. The army will strongly rival leverage uh, its co institutional and hard power to stop that succession process. The sources say Monangagwa is logged in internal power struggle with Vice President Constantino Chuenga, who helped his ascendancy through a coup in 2017 to control the levers of state stewardship and resources. A military source said today, the army is clear on this issue, very, very clear. The president has to serve his constitutional 
constitutional second term and retire in 2028. Let's not forget that he was not supposed to run for a second term in the first place from the military perspective. Although publicly he seems to be in agreement that he will retire in 2028, in political circles he is speaking a different language and giving different signals, encouraging his core supporters to push for a constitutional amendment for, his, for him to stay on until 2030. That he has no takers in the security forces beyond a few individuals who agree that for self-interest, even among the public, it is not a popular proposal. Sources have repeatedly insisted Munangagwa will be blocked by the military, even when he seems to have seized political initiative and to be on the ascendancy amid power consolidation and retention bid. A recent report by local think tank, Zimbabwe Democracy Institution, Institute, says it is abundantly clear that the military has played a decisive role in Zimbabwean politics as Zanu PF continues to grapple with colossal succession battle. The role of the military in intra-party politics will become apparent in the decisive phase. Although at this moment, although at this moment that role has not been shown overtly due to the political military nexus, the military will not be an innocent bystander in the processes to select a new leader in Zanu PF and ultimately of the Republic. It is highly likely that as the military has done before, it will exercise veto power in the election or selection of the Zanu PF leadership. According to the military, the office of the head of state is a straight jacket whose incumbent must meet certain attributes, particularly possessing military credentials. The same credentials can be said to also apply to the office of Zanu PF secretary. Thus, the successor to President Masum Nangagwa is likely to be a military man, not a civilian politician. Whether he will be vice president, Chiwenga, or not is a subject of further inquiry. But the likelihood of a military man or military backed candidate is inevitable and unavoidable and inescapable. As the succession debates continue to unravel amid indications that there is no homogeneity among Zanu PF civilians with the party divided between factions. This presents a potentially hazardous scenario. Rigorous research is required to understand the nature of elite contradictions within the military and their mechanizations regarding Munangagwa's successor, as well as whether the military supports attempts to prolong Munangagwa's presidency to 2030. Throughout Zimbabwe's history, the military has played a pivotal role in both the establishment and maintenance of political authority due to the communist-like civil-military relations, which necessitate the, perver the pervasive presence of the military in civil political processes. Zimbabwe experiences military-dominated civil-military relations. Despite 44 years of independence and civilian control, the military has remained the untimely foundation for the arbiter of power in Zimbabwe. It is likely, it is highly likely that the military will be the arbiter among the warring factions, as it was during the coup against Mugabe in November 2017. As political authorities in Zimbabwe is highly personalized, militarized, anyone who succeeds Mnangagwa will have to rely on the strength of their links to the military. This is especially true in the party like Zanu-PF, where there is an absence of an institutionalized structure of leadership succession, further, further intensifying factional fights. Therefore, the military's influence in Zimbabwean politics is both profound enduring and enduring. The future of, Zim of Zanu-PF and the public will likely continue to be shaped by the military's involvement necessitating a announced, announced understanding of civil-military relations and the unique historical and political context of Zimbabwe. The path to democratic governance is Zimbabwe will require addressing these complex dynamics and ensuring that civilian authority is upheld 
in accordance with constitutional principles. Those are Buddha's stories in New York, but in Zimbabwe, from Soro, Penya, since the army is saying President Masum Nangagwa should retire in 2028. Since I've been saying, I'm looking for the Masum Nangagwa comment section.